Hi, my name is Robert Feranek. I'm from Federal Academy. And in this video, we are going to learn how to create scripts for Cadence Allegro. Wow. Now, now you can ask why I would like to create scripts. I'm a layout engineer or I, I'm hardware design engineer. I don't really need to create scripts. You may be surprised how useful they can be. And it's not difficult. It's quite easy to create them and uh, they can save you some time. So in my situation, the script, what we are going to learn today, yeah, in my situations, situation, I needed this script. And the script is basically very simple. It will add a layer name or subclass name on specific layers, on selected layers. Yeah. Why I would like to use something like this? I'm not sure if you ever generated assembly drawing for specific variant in Allegro, have you? If yes, then you know that when you generate this uh, assembly drawing, it will look something like this. Okay? If you never done it, you will find it uh, in export variants, create assembly drawing, or sometimes it is also here, depends what kind of license you are using. So when you click here, you select the variant, yeah, you press OK, and it will generate something like this. When I zoom in, you will see this is variant, 6224 volt variant, and uh, you can see these blue components, they are fitted, and these gray components, they are not fitted for this variant. If I select different variant, like this one, watch this, yeah? These components are fitted, this one is not fitted. If I go here, on this one, this is fitted, these are not fitted, yeah? So it's very useful, but uh, always when I generated these variants, I always had to manually also put there the variant name. Because if you just print this, and if you have several of these papers on your table, then you don't know what variant it is. You really would like to have the variant name somewhere here. But always when you regenerate this variant, the name would disappear. So that's why I wanted to create a script. And uh, this is how it works, okay? Once you create a script, you can use a command line. Watch down here. This is the name of the script, or this is the name of the new command, which I created, which you will create. Add layer name, press enter. Wow. Yeah. When I, when I was starting with the scripting, I had no idea I can create so nice dialog box. This is awesome. I love it. So basically in this dialog box, you can select the layers where you would like to place the text. So because we are doing this uh, for our assembly drawing, we would like to place the text on specific variant layers. So 6 to 24 volt variant T, 5 volt variant top. This is the text which will be for the top layers. And this is the text which will be for the bottom layers. Bottom layers, it means the text will be mirrored. Okay. As you can see, the script automatically pre-select the layers because it's searching for variant T in the name of the layer. So it automatically pre-select the layers. Uh, here you can uh, select the size of the text which you would like to use. And this is the position where the text will be placed. So it will be somewhere here. I will zoom in so you can see how it, lo how it looks. Yeah. Watch down here when I press this button it will add the layer name. See? Wow, nice. Basically now when I select different, watch, it is 6 to 24 volt variant, okay? If I select different variant, assembly drawing of different variant like this one, it changes, yeah? See, 5 volt variant. If I go on the top, I flip this, yeah, 6 to 24 volt variant. It automatically adds the layer names on all the four assembly drawing layers. Oops, I wanted to show you this one. It's very useful, very quick, and uh, 
it will not make mistake. Yeah? If you do it manually, you can make mistake. Uh, if you do it automatically, it saves you a lot of time. So let's do it. Let's create this script. Let's learn how to create this script. We are not going to write the whole script by ourselves in this video. We are going to download it and I will explain how you can install the script or how you can run it in Allegro and uh, I will explain how you can modify it and where you will find the documentation which will help you to create your own script. So uh, I posted the code on GitHub. Just go to github.com uh, and search for this script, okay? Allegro script at layer name. Go there. Go here and download the zip file. Once you have the zip, go inside. And uh, here are two important files which we are going to use. Now go back to GitHub, scroll down. And uh, here you will find uh, some notes which I created uh, uh, notes about the installation and about uh, how to run the script. So this depends where your cadence is installed. You need to copy the IL file into the share local PCB skill directory and you need to copy the form file inside the share local PCB forms directory. Let's do it. I'm inside the cadence uh, share local PCB skill directory and I, I'm going to copy here the IL file, this one. It's there. I go up inside the forms directory. I need to copy there the form file. It's there. Go back to GitHub. And uh, now we have more options how to load the script. Once you are very happy with the script, you definitely would like to load it automatically when your when your Allegro will start. So this is how you do it. Okay. Switch off Allegro go inside the share local PCB skill directory and copy the example il init file into the Allegro il init file. I will copy this text. I go here. I go inside the skill directory. I will open it also here. And I will copy the example into Allegro il init. Okay, perfect, we have it here, okay? These two files, they are exactly the same, just the name is different. This is what we need to run the script or to load the script automatically when Allegro starts. I will switch on Allegro. Okay, and here you can see loading at layer name script. Now, if I copy this and if I use it here, we should be able to see the script. Okay, so this is the way how you check if your script is correctly loaded. Now, let's have a look what is inside the files. And I forgot to mention this uh, example ale init file. It will be there by default, okay? So uh, once you install your cadence, this example il init file will be there after the installation. But just in case you would like to see what is inside the file, I will open this Allegro il init in my notepad. So I will put it here. And I will put there also this uh, il file and also the form file. Okay, this is the il init. I will go here and select the Lisp language. It's just uh, a script which will load all the IL files which are in the directory. It will load it into the Allegro. So you don't have to do any changes here. This IL file, that's our main script. Again, go to language and set it to Lisp. When you scroll down, this is the main script, okay? It's not very long. You can see 
148 lines and most of them are like comments or a lot of them are comments and this file the form file i don't know what language <laughs> you can use here uh, this is the file which describes the gui okay the uh, dialog box again very short file before we dive inside the code i would like to speak a little bit about the documentation yeah because it's very important uh, you know where you can find explanation of the commands and functions which are used inside the scripts yeah? if you would like to understand the script you need to know what the functions uh, will do and what kind of functions you can use so go back to github scroll down and these are the two most important documents or the two documents which i found uh, most useful this one which is here and this one which is here the first document uh, is a document from the cadence installation you can see you will find it inside the cadence directory i will copy this and open it and inside this document you will find explanation of the functions which you can use inside your script to talk to Allegro. The other document, this one, this is explanation of the skill language. Okay? So if you have never used skill uh, programming before or you have never created anything in the skill language, this can be very useful. If I go down, uh, you can see, for example, you can find here explanation about the commands like if, when, case, for, for each. You can find the, the syntax of the commands. You can find here explanation how to, um, I don't know, how to load the script, how to uh, work with strings, what kind of variables you can use, how you, how you can work with lists, and all the basic uh, things which you need or uh, when you are creating the scripts in this one as i explained in this one you will find the functions and i'm going to give you an example how you can use this document here yeah? examples are always the best so i will open our script this one and let's say we would like to know what this uh, function does and what kind of parameters we need to use so i will just copy it I go to this documentation, Ctrl F, Ctrl V, here it is. Okay, I will click. And this is the function, here is the explanation of the function, what kind of parameters you can use. And um, here are some examples. Very, very useful. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you understand how you can use it. Let's go back to our script file and uh, together we will go through every line which is here and I will explain what it does or most of the lines. <laughs> On the beginning of the script uh, there are just comments, okay? Everything starting with the semicolon is just a comment. First real command is this one which is here and you can guess what it does. It prints this text into command line. So if you have a look here, yeah, when we were loading our script, you can see this text here. So this is exactly uh, what is here. The next line here is uh, used to register our script inside the Allegro. If you don't run this uh, function, then basically always when you would like to use your script you would need to go inside the skill mode yeah, and then you can run your script but we don't want to uh, use our script this way we would like to create the real Allegro command that's exactly how this line or why this line is here yeah? if you call this function it will register our script as a real command in Allegro. If you would like to know more, just right click, copy, then what you can do, do you know? 
go to documentation, search for this uh, function and find what it does. Okay, register as a command name the Allegro CMD with the Allegro PCB editor shell system. This code which is here, uh, this is a function which is called when we press uh, the button in uh, our uh, dialog box. So I will go back to this code a little bit later. And this down here, this is the main uh, body of our script. It starts with this procedure. And uh, on the top, I uh, made some uh, definitions of uh, default uh, strings or default parameters and then uh, down here all this is uh, what helps us to create and fill up the form the GUI which we use in our script this line it is only writing into command line so basically when uh, I'm going to show you when I start our script, this is the text starting at layer name script. So this is exactly what you can see here, yeah, starting at layer script. This one, the next line which is here, it will create the form. It will create this which is here. This is what uh, they call form. And if you have a closer look, there are some parameters, okay? So inside this function, we specify the file where the form is uh, described and we also specify the function which will be called when uh, something is doing inside the form. So this is the function which is up here. Yeah. This is the function which is called when we press the button, press this button for example. And this is the file which is here. Now I'm not going to continue down here. First I'm going to explain what is inside this form file. If you would like to know more about the commands which are used inside the form file, go back to the documentation and search for form. Okay. Find this form interface functions. And when you scroll down, here you can find a lot of information about what is used inside the form file. So go into our form file. On the top there is again, these are just comments. Uh, in this file you use this hashtag to mark the comment. And the real uh, form it starts down here with this uh, line. Mm, you can, uh, when you are starting with your own script, you can uh, start with uh, something what I created or with some examples and then you can just modify it. Uh, basically, uh, what is important is this. Yeah, this is the size of the window. This is the size of this form, which is here. Then uh, this is the name of the window, yeah, if you have a look, it's here, federal commands, it is here, federal commands, and then uh, the whole, whole form starts somewhere here. It's very, very, very simple. What do you think, what this does? It just add a simple text into the form, yeah? Text add layer name to the selected layers. If you go here, you will see here, add layer name to the selected layers. Here down, this is, here are some options. So we would like to have the text bold. And this is the position of the text. And this is end of the definition of this text. Yeah, bold position. It's bold and the position is uh, two one or something like that. Two one, yeah. Next few lines, what, what do you think what it does? It's a text, yeah? This is a simple text, it's not bold one, and this is the position. So it starts, 2 is uh, the X, 
position and three is the y position yeah so this one here it will be below this text which is here but it will start at the same point so it is below this text but it starts at the same point and it's not bold and this is the text very very simple i'm pretty sure we understand the next one which is here this is group group is this nice uh, rectangle which is here and here is the group name select layers what you specify here is the name of the group so select layer this is the position when the group starts so again it starts uh, at the same position as this text but it starts a little bit lower yeah in the next line so it starts uh, here 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 same position but lower this is the size 60 by 18 18 yeah so this is the size okay and that's it what you need to know inside the group we put there another text which is called top this is the position of the text if you go here so this is the top that's the position of the text and below the top this is something this is a list okay this is how they they call it field this is the list the field has name so we can uh, we can call it from our script here inside the script we will need the name to fill up the uh, list this is again the position of the list this is the size of the list and here are some options for example we enable multi select if i go here so this is the list or this is the field which is specified here yeah field subclass top so that's this and it enables multi select so when i press ctrl i can select more items inside the list at this moment here there is nothing inside the list okay we will fill up this list from our script here another text another list so this is the bottom mirror text this is the subclass bottom list another text bottom mirror this is the another list here and uh, here is a different group the options group which is here options group there is the text and there is drop down box again they call it field it has name font size this is the drop, drop down box which is here uh, position of the drop down box and uh, the drop down box here you can pre-select or you can uh, pre-fill the drop down box so if you use this pop you can pre-fill it initially i pre-fill uh, the drop down box only with one item this one which is here but then a little bit later we will fill it up inside our script so if you are creating uh, a, a dialogue you don't have to always fill up all the items from the script you can fill them up also directly in the definition of the form okay so it's called down box oh it's called uh, font size uh, sorry so this is what we will use inside our script to fill up all the text box sizes again uh, another text position x and y that's this position x and y and uh, these are field to get the x position and this is the field to get y position so it's this one which is here and it's this one which is here as you can see again they have names text position y and uh, also text position x because we will read these fields uh, in our script down here here is the button it's done button this is the text inside the button again this is the position 
and the size okay this is the button and this is here just uh, add some space uh, below the button this is nothing really important it's basically the space which is here yeah because the height of this window is automatic if i don't put here the space the window will be finishing just below the button it didn't look very well so i put there these few lines it's very very simple now go back to our uh, main script file and we finished here yeah so we created the form now every time when we need to call the form we need to use this fw here what we need to do next what do you think we need to fill up the form yeah especially we need to fill up this list which are here and we need to fill up this drop down box and the default uh, values here so in these few lines which are here we are going to fill up and pre-select this list which is here in this first line we will get a list of all subclasses included in the manufacturing class yeah because i know uh, my uh, assembly drawing variant assembly drawings are located uh, inside the manufacturing class that's why i list all the manufacturing classes here but you can do it for whole design you can do it for any class you want in this script i only needed it for the manufacturing uh, class so i specified here that by default we would like to get all the uh, subclasses from the manufacturing class and they will be located inside this list now later here what we do we will put this list with all the names of the layers all the names of the subclasses of the manufacturing class we will fill them up inside our form fw form into the subclass top element and if you remember the subclass top element inside our form is specified here and it is exactly this which one here which is here okay you understand again here we get a list of all the subclasses here we will take the list and send it into our form and fill it up inside the subclass top field now in these next lines we are going to pre-select all the subclasses which have in the name this variant t substring so we go through all the we, we go through the complete list and when we find uh, inside the list a uh, layer or subclass with this variant t inside the name we will pre-select this in the field okay so the function which is here will take the layer will take the subclass and it will select it inside our form inside the subclass top field and then it's very similar for these other lines which are here yeah but this is done for the subclass bottom list for this one which is here so we will use exactly the same list which we created here with all the subclasses inside the manufacturing class uh, we put them inside our form into the subclass bottom field and then in these few lines we go through all the all the items inside the list and we are searching for variant b inside the name of the subclass and if we find it if it's true then select this item inside our list into in uh, the subclass bottom field 
I'm sure you understand. In the next lines, uh, we are going to we are going to fill up this uh, form or uh, this drop down box, which is which is here. Go back into our script file, and I'm not going to explain this into every detail. I will just give you an idea what we are doing here. So in this first line, we will get uh, the number of text blocks which are in our design. So this will return number of text blocks which we have in our board. Okay, so it will return number eight. Then uh, we go through the all the blocks and we will find the name of the block okay, because for some of the blocks I put there the name and we will build the list which we then uh, fill up inside the drop down box in our script this one which is here so we, by this, by running this command which is here, we will take the list which we build it, which we build it here. We will take the list of all the text boxes with the name, uh, with the uh, box number and also the name of the text box. And we will fill them up inside our form into the font sizes drop down box. If you have a look inside our form file. This is the drop down drop down box, yeah. It's this one which is here. In this next line, we will pre-select the item which is called standard. So even in the drop down box you can pre-select the item items. Yeah? So we pre-select this one which is here. Now this is very simple one, okay, by default, <coughs> sorry, by default uh, we will set the X position to 0 and the Y position of the text to minus 2 through this form set field function, that's what you can basically see here, and then we will uh, show the form. Once the form uh, is uh, shown in the Allegro, we will also write there the text into the status bar of the into the status bar of this uh, window. We will put there the version of the script. So this text which you can see here, it will take this text which is here version 0 0.1 and it will put it into the status bar of our form. Okay, we are almost done. Only what is missing is, you know, specify what will happen when you press the button. What need to happen when you press the button, do you know? We need to take all these uh, variables which we set up here and then we need to add the text on the specified layer. Now, when you press the button, this function is going to be called, okay? Anything what you do with the form, uh, always this function is called. We specify this function here when we created the form. And uh, especially when you press the button, this condition which is here will be true. And all these lines which are here will execute. The first line, it's very simple. I told you a lot of things in the script are very simple. So this one, what is it going to do? It just writes the text into the command window to tell us that we are starting executing the script, doing the changes in our layers. 
this piece of code which is here i don't want to make you confused uh, it's it is here only because uh, if we would like to use uh, or if we would like to specify position inside the uh, functions which we will use a little bit later the position needs to be in a list format okay but uh, here if we just read these fields which are here we will get text so these few lines which you can see here they will make a list from these two values which are here and this is the magic okay basically these lines which are here that's everything what we need to do yeah that's what we need to add the text on specific layers here this uh function which is here will uh, have a look inside the subclass top uh, field and uh, it will take all the selected items and put them inside this list okay so this list only contains the selected items of the subclass top field this list will only contain this uh, 6224v variant t and this one 5v five volt variant top items then here we will prepare the properties of the text especially we need to set up the correct uh, mirroring option so for the top layer the text is not mirrored and also we need to set the size of the text the size which we would like to use then we go through all the selected layers yeah and on every selected layer we will add the text we will add this text so the layer name at this position with these uh, parameters which are specified here on this layer which is here pretty simple same here but for the bottom so uh, the main difference is that the uh, text will be mirrored so mirrored through and the text is uh, justified to the right yeah this one is justified to the left but again we go through all the selected layers uh, inside this bottom list and we just add the text on the selected layers into the position and with the orientation of the text which we uh, set up here that's it yeah here this is the last command telling us that uh, we created or we added all the text on all the layers and then we just close the form Ta-da! it's done before we completely finish there are two things what i would like to speak about important things okay first is how you can uh, kind of debug and load the script so you don't have to always switch on and switch off allegro so if you are doing any changes in your script like let's say uh, i don't know i'm going to remove uh, this text yeah this one which is here the bold text i'm going to remove it so for the forms if you if you make any changes in the form you don't need to do anything special i will save it i will close this and i will just run the command okay see it's automatically updated but if you do any changes inside the script inside this file then uh, you need to do it a little bit differently you need to reload the script so let's say uh, i don't know i'm going to remove this uh, content of the drop down box so i will delete this i made changes in my script so i will save it and what you need to do you need to run this command load at layer name dot il script i will copy this you need to go inside the skill mode and now you need to paste this here i will close this you need to load the script yeah it will tell you that uh, 
it was redefined. And now you can run the command or you can call the procedure, this one which is here. Yeah, you call this procedure which is here. So I will copy this and we can run it. See, the drop down box is now empty. There is only the default value. So this is very important, okay? It can help you with uh, developing your script. Also, what can help you developing your script is the second thing what I would like to mention. I will close this. And uh, you can find examples uh, inside the Cadence installation directory. So if you go up here, share PCB um, examples, scale, form, basic. Uh, this is what I used. Yeah, this is the form file and this is the script file which I use to create my own script. It's very, very useful. Yeah, I will show you what is inside this script. Uh, to run this script, uh, what do you need to do? Do you know? You need to copy it uh, inside the local directory. So what I will do, I will go here. Share local PCB scale. Here you need to copy this uh, ill file. I already have it there, yeah. And this uh, other file, this one, form file, you need to copy it inside the forms. Again, I already have it there, okay? So I don't need to copy it. Now, let's have a look what is inside the files. So I will put it here. And also this one. Uh, if you would like to run the example, copy this, go inside the Allegro. You need to be in the skill mode, paste this to load the example. To run the example, copy this next line, okay? This is the line which will start the procedure, which is here. So again, copy go into Allegro, be in the skill mode and run the example. This is how it looks. Yeah. This is uh, what I used as the basic example, as the starting point for my own scripts. Here you can find all kinds of examples. If you need, for example, buttons, radio buttons, checkboxes in your own forms, this can be very, very useful. Tree view, different kind of drop down boxes, very useful. If you would like to see how they created it, go inside the form, have a look what they used. If you would like to see how they work with the, with the items inside the form, have a look inside the script file. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. That's everything what, uh, what is important to know to start with the uh, script in Cadence Allegro. I really hope you found this video useful. I really hope it will help you to start creating your own scripts. And I really hope you got some ideas what kind of scripts you could uh, create. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.